Hey everyone, welcome to Your Enneagram Coach, the podcast. I'm Beth McCourt, your Enneagram Coach. And at YUC, we desire to bring you real and lasting transformation while using the Enneagram in your personal life, but also all of your relationships. And we're deeply committed to training and raising up the next generation of amazing Enneagram coaches. Now, in each episode, we are talking with some fabulous guests, uh, highlighting what they do, but we're also incorporating some coaching conversations. Now, today I have an Enneagram expert, and so I'm just going to let her be the expert that she is. And if you enjoy this podcast, we ask that you like, subscribe, and actually place a review so people can find this podcast as well. Now, if you're out there and you're an Enneagram enthusiast and you're looking to become an Enneagram expert coach, then take our Become an Enneagram Coach course. And you can try it out for free through our mini course called yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash mini course. But if you're like, I'm not quite ready for that. I'm just wanting to learn and use the Enneagram for my own personal gain and transformation. Great. Then we suggest that you get your own personal Enneagram coach and you can get one of our certified coaches at myenneagramcoach.com. That's myenneagramcoach.com. All right, let's dive into today's episode with our special guest, Jackie Brewster. Now, Jackie is a certified Enneagram coach through, yep, YEC, and she's also certified an experiential specialist. Now, she lives in Franklin, Tennessee, which is just around the corner with her husband, Steve, and children, Um, and she loves to help teams and organizations overcome feeling overwhelmed. So she helps people to uncover and discover how they can grow towards health in their personal lives, as well as their corporate roles through teachings with the Enneagram and biblical truths. Well, Jackie, it is amazing to have you on the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited about today's conversation. Yeah. Actually, I was just on your podcast literally two days ago, and now we're here having you on mine. So I'm so thrilled. Um, Okay. So let's just start real quickly. Like, how did you start using the Enneagram? Um, How did you get to where you are today? Like, where did that all come from? Where was your passion? And where do you feel like it's taking you? So I started using the Enneagram just for um, my own personal use. Um, Oh my gosh. I I always think about like, how old are my kids? Because they were like two when I got introduced and they're 15 now. So about 13 years of just using this tool for my own, you know, personal gain as far as like self-awareness and things like that. And then, um, as my kids got older and I had more time and I was thinking about next steps for my life, um, I, you know, dove into a little bit more, um, self-awareness work. And one of those tools was the Enneagram at a deeper level. And so I took your course that you offer. And from there, the doors just opened. It just, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like I, I, I just kept taking the next best step and then the doors opened and, um, opened, a thriving coaching practice, written a couple books, um, do a lot of speaking and things like that. So I love the journey that I've been on with the Enneagram. Um, I love mostly though, that I get to help people find themselves along the journey. Like what does this look like? So I love to hold space for people as they use this tool for self-awareness, self-discovery and, um, healing and growth. Yeah. Now tell me, or tell I know, I know what they are, but tell everyone about your books um, and where they can find them. So all of my books are um, on Amazon, you know, all the places that you buy books, Barnes and Noble, Books A Million, all those places. You can buy it anywhere books are sold. Um, I have a devotional that is Hearing God Speak, a 52-week Enneagram devotional. It is so beautiful and a perfect gift for the holiday. Um, it is, it has Enneagram awareness for all nine types. It has journal prompts and it has meditation practices, um, scripture based. It is such a beautiful project. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of that one. It's so beautiful. Um, then I have a card deck called Enneagram essentials. So 125 cards for self-awareness and growth. And this is a great box of cards to bring to some of our holiday gatherings. If you want to begin to have conversations about the Enneagram and maybe people yeah. don't know what this is, um, because it is a bite-sized, uh, way for you to get into the Enneagram. So if you follow me on social media, it kind of feels like that. It's like 
awareness, but in bite-sized pieces. So instead of reading a book, you'd get to experience it that way. And then my latest book is The Enneagram in Your Marriage, which is a workbook. And that is birthed out of um, 20 plus years of marriage, ups and downs, twists and turns, and a deep, deep desire for emotional connection. And so Mm -hmm. that is a, I feel like it's a passion project. I really believe in the importance of emotional connection for longevity in marriages. And I, um, I want to see people be able to do this. And the only way that we can do this is to attune to our partner and that's to grow in empathy and compassion and the Enneagram is such a great tool to help us do that. Yeah, it sure is. That's absolutely right. Okay. So your type, what's your type? How'd you find it? And how has the Enneagram been beneficial for you personally? Well, I'm a seven with a good old eight wing. Um, I first typed as an eight and I thought, well, yeah, probably. And then (laughs) I read it through it a little bit more. Remind, let me remind you guys. So this is when my twins were two and I had two other ones. So there's four of them and I was getting ran over. So (laughs) when I read it, I'm like, yep, I'm strong. Yep. I'm assertive. Yep. I'm all these things, but it didn't quite line up as far as like the true motivation and my heart longing. Like what was I really looking for? Sure. And so I just continued to to read and to dig into it a little bit more and more. And as I did, that seven just resonated. Everything about it um, really just began to give me language to parts of myself that I thought w- were flawed or broken or wrong. And finally, I read words about myself that made sense to me. And so, you know, the, the journey is often inward first. And so that was the beginning of, um, me really understanding who I am and, and, um, in, I think embracing parts of myself that I felt like, yeah, I'm a great start, starter, horrible finisher, you know, all those things. And I'm like, no, that is not true. I am a great starter and I can finish if I feel well supported. And so there was a lot of healing pieces that happened through the use of the Enneagram. Yeah, that's right. Um, Okay. So we all just finished our Thanksgiving turkey Mm -hmm. and stuffing. My family, that's what we do. We, we make this like family tradition recipe of bread stuffing with sage and it's amazing. So we're all Mm -hmm. full. Um, We've had our holiday bill with our family, Mm -hmm. which oftentimes can be wonderful and horrible and usually a mix somewhere in between. But we've got a couple weeks until we have the next holiday. Right. So a lot of us probably, like I said, had some ups and downs with family dynamics. So I wanted you to bring you on here and really just kind of paint the picture of what the Enneagram's role in holiday gatherings Mm -hmm. is. So as we enter into December, the Christmas season, and families are going to gather again, as we know, it's that breeding ground for mm-hmm. misunderstanding, conflicts, mm-hmm. um, and really relational hurt. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be. So as an Enneagram expert, can mm-hmm. you kind of really talk us through the importance of using the Enneagram to help understand one another and have those meaningful connections over the holiday, you know, dinner or opening presents Mm -hmm. so that we have less conflict and actually have more harmonious relationships. And how can we use it to improve like communication and empathy with our family Mm -hmm. members? Mm -hmm. This tool is, um, it is life-changing. It is personally life-changing, but it's also relationally life-changing if you use it in the correct way. So the Enneagram is never meant to be a a tool to put labels all over yourself or somebody else. This Mm. tool is always meant to be more of a holistic tool that helps you begin to understand why you do what you do. It gives you language to that. Um, And it helps you grow in empathy and compassion for yourself. And then as you begin to learn about you, you probably then start to read about other numbers and and then maybe you're like, huh, this sounds like so-and-so or so-and-so, you know, and you start to put pieces together to that. So if you want to use this in a healthy way over the holidays, it is a tool for empathy and compassion. It is really a tool to begin to understand that my family members are not like me. So I have four children. They are four different personality types. There's six of us all together. Not one of us has the same personality type in my immediate family. So when we begin to use this tool for understanding, it's not so much pointing fingers or blame. It's more around curiosity or like, huh, 
that just triggered that person. Let me take <laughs> note of that. Let me pay attention to that. Or, you know, for I've got two sisters that are Enneagram fours and a daughter that's an Enneagram four. So mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of highlight this one for a minute. So um, they're all very different in their expression of their fourness, uh, but they all want to be authentically who they are and they want to be accepted as they are. And so when they show up to different family gatherings, they're already expecting to be rejected or to somebody to say some stupid comment to them or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, uh, but understanding this about them, I know like I need to highlight the good. I need to, I need to say, I love that outfit. Oh my gosh. I love what you did with your hair or tell me about your grades. Like how are you doing in school? Like there's a lean towards curiosity around the person instead yeah. of being like, oh, what did you do to your hair? Or huh, <laughs> purple. That's interesting. Um, instead of the, the way that we say things matter, our yeah. facial expressions they really, really matter. Our way that we um, give, like our body language, the way that we give people attention matters. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about these family holidays, I think the posture of curiosity is huge around all the different personalities at the table and what made them who they are. Yeah. They didn't just get there. You right. Know? And the Enneagram when we use this, it, it goes all the way back to childhood. So it's it's these patterns that we've built upon, built upon, built upon, built upon. And there's a lot of people that have had not had the opportunity to do work. Right. Um, you know, and so if you've never done any work, then you're functioning from that average range of personality. So you're fun functioning from a lot of autopilot. How do I keep myself safe? How do I get love and how do I get my needs met? Mm -hmm. Um in, in that way these patterns that you're going to see within your family members that probably irk you or confuse you, mm -hmm. this is how they figured out how to function. So I think that if you know the Enneagram or you're curious around the Enneagram, uh, it's with kindness that you read about them. And it's with kindness that you approach a topic. Um, it's not good to walk in and be like, you're so six. You're just such a six, you know, always anxious about everything. Um, I've got a six daughter. She, that would fly all over her. I mean, mm -hmm. that would be the end of, it would be a bad, it would be a bad holiday dinner. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Right? And as it should be, right? I mean, right. and we always talk about how, you know, you don't want to use the Enneagram as a sword or as right. a shield. So right. you don't want to use it like you said, like, oh, you're being a six or you're being an eight yeah. or you're being a nine right. or whatever it is. Like that does not promote good relationship. Right. But you also don't want to be like, well, I'm a nine. So, you right. know, what? sometimes I forget things and procrastinate. Right. Like, sorry, I forgot to put the turkey in the oven. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to take three more hours. Mm -hmm. You know, like right. I, I can't hide behind my personality. Right. I need to be honest and authentic mm -hmm. and real and mm -hmm. own up to the things mm -hmm. I need to own up. But right. um, yeah, so yeah. don't want to use it as that sword or shield yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's it for, for your own personal use, it's owning you. It's, it's owning, I always say like, you've got to own the parts of your story that, that you play a role in. Yeah. Um, and you're only, you can only change you, you know? So when we're thinking about the personal work of the Enneagram, uh, the more awareness you have around what, what you do, why you're doing it and what you're doing, it doesn't mean that it stops. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to cook a ton and I love to cook. And I think I learned how to, I, I learned how to cook early on. I learned that food made people happy. Um, and we were in ministry for years. We hosted large gatherings and everybody loved to come to my house because I feed them well. Um, and that was a huge part of my story. And then I did a lot of work around why I cooked. Why? Hmm. And it was one of those things that this is how I get love. This is what keeps me safe. Being in the kitchen keeps me safe. I don't know how to have conversations necessarily around what people are talking about, or I don't know what people are talking about. So, so that barrier of the kitchen kind of kept me safe, you know? So I did a ton of work around that. I don't cook very often anymore. You guys, my family really wishes that I did, but <laughs> I'm like, I got, I got healing over that. Now we get takeout. Um, <laughs> but we had a, a family gathering, um, last year and it was difficult. And there was some difficult moments in, in the week of um, Christmas, and I found myself cooking nonstop, nonstop. Hmm. And um, I recognized it, and my husband was very kind about it. He was like, hey, you're cooking a lot. I'm like, I know. I think I feel really safe right here. 
Like this yeah. feels like a safe place for me to, to, um, to be busy. You know, as a seven, I was anxious. So it, it felt like a safe retreat for me to be busy. And I was giving things that made people happy. So it just felt like a safe thing. So I knew what I was doing and, and I knew why I was doing it. And it wasn't bad, but I, I understood it was, it was a coping strategy. And yeah. I was trying to keep myself um, emotionally safe in that place, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, absolutely. And all nine types are going to do similar mm -hmm. things when they feel unsafe. Right. I mean, similar things as in like their own coping strategies. Right. Right. Um, and we all have our own coping strategies. And mm -hmm. even with that, it's then going to be the actual strategy is unique. So like not all sevens are cooking, no. um, but keeping themselves busy mm -hmm. and away from pain right. definitely is, is true. Mm -hmm. So right. whatever avenue mm -hmm. that looks like for right. a person is right. the coping strategy for them. Right. Right. And it's not wrong. I think I want to say that for the holidays, it's not wrong for you to lean into your coping strategies. What I would want as a coach afterwards, right? What I would want is for you to then go talk about it with somebody that that's trusted so that you can, you can walk out what happened. And so, um, so that's what I did. I had a really hard week. And then after that, I was able to take, take that information that I knew about myself and then process it out. So it didn't stay in me. Emotions get trapped um, in deep tissue if we don't work through them. Emotions need to work through the body. And so that was one of those things like um, that I needed to do. And so I would encourage you if you are in ho the holiday season and you're like, man, I'm all up in my coping strategies. Okay. Right. Okay. Make a note of it. And then when, when you feel like you can, when it feels safe, right. uh, we can't do work when we don't feel safe. So when you feel safe, uh, seek a trusted friend, coach, or therapist um, that can help you process maybe what happened during yeah. the holiday gathering. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. All right. So using the gram guys is very helpful, mm -hmm. very informative. Mm -hmm. Um, but please do not sit down at the kitchen table and tell everyone that they have to take right. the Enneagram. <laughs> right. And they must find their type. Right. It's just, I mean, invite people to this space mm -hmm. and whoever mm -hmm. wants to join. Great. Mm -hmm. but not everybody mm -hmm. does. And that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. The Enneagram right. is just one tool of many mm -hmm. things out there that can help relationships uh, grow mm -hmm. and thrive. But I think what you were saying, and I agree, you got to start with you. Right. And so understanding yourself, working on yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. knowing what might come up with the family dynamics, mm -hmm. how you can kind of prepare yourself. Right. Um, but also those healthy avenues of mm -hmm. taking good care of yourself mm -hmm. during the holidays is really important. Mm -hmm. Um, but in that, we talk about how, um, each of the types are kind of like a different lens, like a different colored mm -hmm. lens on your glasses right. mm -hmm. and learning what is it like to take off my lens for a second and put on my mom's lens, you know, mm -hmm. like whatever type she is. So my mom mm -hmm. is a type six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is my mom saying these things? Well, okay. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. She's probably anxious and she's thinking about what could happen. Mm -hmm. And so in my world as a nine, I just want to say, it's all going to work out. It's right. going to be fine. Don't bring me into your anxious world. Mm -hmm. I can be more curious and compassionate. I can right. ask questions mm -hmm. and I don't have to buy into the anxiety, but I can mm -hmm. honor where she's at and love her. Right. Well. right. Um, I, that's, I, I think that that's the key when it comes to gatherings of people whether it's the holidays or whether it's groups of people, new people that you have to be around. Um, I think it's understanding that you don't, you don't have to agree with people, right. um, but you, you can be kind mm -hmm. and even your disagreement with them, uh, yeah. which is hard during the holidays. I get, it, especially politics get brought up. Oh my gosh, we're in trouble. Uh, right. But I do think like, you don't have to agree with people, but you can affirm people like, mom, I see that you're really anxious. So yeah. you're not saying I'm really anxious, but you're saying, I see that you're really anxious. Uh, my mom is an Enneagram too. Mm -hmm. And so, um, she is all about the gathering of all the kids and, you know, all the things she, we get lots of messages around gifts. It's just a lot. And, yeah. uh, we all love it, but it can be a little bit overwhelming. And mm -hmm. I know that there's like, I'm sensitive to her sensitivities, if that makes yep. sense. So, oh, yeah. you know, so you're just like, you're kind of like, oh, she just got her feelings hurt. My sister is mm -hmm. kind of snappy. So my mm -hmm. sister will just 
she'll just bite my brother and my sister. My brother's an Enneagram six and they both kind of just will bark at her, you know, and she'll be like, so offended. And then I'm like, okay, what just happened? And we slow it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, my, all of my family knows their Enneagram type and sure. talk about it and things like that, which is helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I've got my mother-in-law's an Enneagram one. And so we are very different. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes I'm like, why does it have to be so rigid? You know, and she's probably thinking, why does it have to be so loosey goosey, Jackie? <laughs> so there's, I think it's, it really, really helps me to understand she really cares about what is right and wrong and good and bad. And so in her eyes, this is how we do Christmas dinner. And this is what it needs to look like. And so I'm going to respect and honor her in that. Yeah. Now, when I have it at my house, it looks different, but at her house, it's going to look like this. Yeah. So I, I do think it's that give and take, that empathetic piece. Um, we're not doormats. So we're not saying, hey, you guys, just, you know, take whatever comes. Right. We're no. not saying that at all. Yeah. Um, we're saying more be curious around some of the reactions or comments or what is actually happening at the mm-hmm. table uh, when when things do escalate, if they escalate. Yeah. No, that's so good. Um, okay. So we, we now realize, Hey, let's Mm kind of take off our lens. Let's put on someone else's lens. Let's have understanding, compassion, curiosity, empathy, all those great Mm -hmm. things, being gracious and kind. Mm -hmm. Um, but now let's talk about, let's kind of, what I'd love for you to do is go through all nine types Okay, and let's talk about how each type can, kind of identify some common stressors or triggers that are going to pop up in the holiday season. Like, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. basically what activates a type one or two Mm -hmm. or three, like what are those common stress activators and what would be their typical coping mechanism or their coping strategy? Mm -hmm. So this is, um, it's just so interesting when you start to think about it like this, you know, so for the Enneagram one, knowing that they really want to be, you know, good and right. And so that's the focus. And so what can activate or trigger them is, um, is somebody saying that they did something wrong or them, um, burning the stuffing, you know, burning something or them making a mistake or missing a present or, uh, you know, they forgot to invite so-and-so. So if they feel like they, they did something wrong, or that other people think that they're doing something wrong, we're going to see a reaction. Sometimes with the Enneagram one, you're going to see um, a verbal reaction. Sometimes you will. It depends on it depends on the subtypes within the Enneagram system. That's right. Yeah. A whole different top you know topic of conversation. But I think it's important to know. Because there's certain ones that anger is not appropriate. Like we don't show anger. We're just going to, we're going to smile and act like it doesn't bother us. But man, we are mad. So we're going to go do the dishes mad, you know? So there's like, I'm going to just act like it doesn't bother me. And then what happens a lot of the times though, it's kind of like they swallow that and it kind of grows a little bit of bitterness or a little resentment. They don't feel like they can, they can tell anybody how they really feel. There's also another type of one though, that is willing to show their anger. Mm-hmm. And and be more loud about it, and we can oftentimes think that that this one is an eight, but they're right. not. They're one. Right. Yeah, they're just a little bit more passionate, a little bit more fiery. Um, but we'll see some of that come out when when they're trying to cope with the feelings around. Um, These people think I did something wrong, or maybe I did something wrong, or I I don't feel like I, I'm winning here somehow. Or they might be like, my family member is not doing. Christmas or Thanksgiving, right? Yes. Or why are they having a drink? Or why yes. are they why are they using that language? Or why is that their political view? So or or um the dishwasher does not get filled that way. Let me come and rescue you yes. by putting the dishes in the right way. Yes. Which so, I, yes, please come do that. That's how I feel right. Like anyone. <laughs> Any type ones, you can come to my house and put my dishes in right. I would be more than happy for you to do that. That's how I feel about that. Yes. But on the healthy side, when we're seeing growth for the Enneagram one, it's catching this. They're able to catch like, 
I have some really big feelings right now. Um, and they're able to maybe even remove themselves for a couple of minutes, go breathe, go take a walk, go outside, go to their bedroom, go to the bathroom, whatever you need. Just taking right. a couple of minutes to breathe through it and kind of recenter. Um, and then we'll see a much more gracious side of an Enneagram one come out. Uh, it takes work. All of the high side of our numbers, it takes work. It does not, it's no. not like our natural response. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. I yeah. wish it was. I know. I know. It all growth, really all growth is hard, but it is really good. Yeah, it is. It is, especially when you can catch it and be like, that normally really, really irritates me. But you know what? They are their own person and they are responsible for their own actions. Right. Um, and when a, when a one is at the healthy side, they're able to separate themselves in their thoughts and opinions from other people's actions. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. It's really, really hard. Right. It's really, really hard. Um, so our, our Enneagram twos. Mm -hmm. So what is going to make them, uh, what's the trigger or activator for the Enneagram yeah. two? Yeah. Um, it's typically has to do with connection, relation, you know, relationship connection. Um, it has to do with uh, not being thought of, maybe overlooked. Um, it might have to do with not being invited to something. Um, there's like a dismiss of them in some yeah. way, uh, or like I've done all this for everybody else and nobody thought about me. Like, yeah. how come nobody got me the present I wanted? I got everybody the presents they want. Um, you know, I think some moms of littles probably can resonate with that one. Like there's so much giving that and happens. They're so thoughtful they are. and good at giving. Mm -hmm. like, yes. I am not that. And yeah. my daughter is a two and I marvel at the mm -hmm. giftedness in giving gifts. Yeah. Like they are very thoughtful mm -hmm. and they, they take note all year about what people like right. and mm -hmm. they're ready for it. And I'm always mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know. What do you like? Would you like to gift card? I mean, you know, it's so <laughs> terrible, um, but they are they're, because mm -hmm. they're so thoughtful of others. Mm -hmm. They're thinking others mm -hmm. are going to be that thoughtful right. about them. And when they're not, mm -hmm. they, it really is hurtful to it the is. two. It feels like they're mm -hmm. not valued mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. special. Like they try right. to show value and that other people are special to them. Right. And some of this too, is not necessarily a gift, an exchangeable gift. Sometimes it's the gift of time. It's right. like um, being invited to something, being thought of, being part of something, um, stopping by, you know, like mm -hmm. to grandparents' houses and things like that, like stopping by and seeing them, which mm -hmm. I know the hustle and bustle of the holidays is hard when you've got kiddos and things like that, or you're young adults, you've got all these things going on, but remembering that um, all people have feelings. And so mm -hmm. sometimes it is, it is remembering the people. Right. Um, so as a two, it would be like, oh, they thought of me. They mm -hmm. stopped by, you know, they, they made a big deal of me for a little bit. So yes. during the holidays, I think that that is important when it doesn't happen. It's very hurtful. And we will see a reaction from a two. Uh, and it's usually a feeling of like, I've done this everything for everybody. I've done all of this. Nobody is seeing me. Um, there, I, what I have witnessed, I have witnessed the, the illness side of it come out, hmm. headaches, body aches, um, weird, you know, sicknesses, different things like that. Just the carrying of the emotions that they yep. don't feel like they can express. So I do see that a lot with, um, with clients too, is yep. that the heaviness of all of it. So sometimes it doesn't come out verbally, but it might come out physically for the two. And so if you're a two listening to this, this might resonate with you too, around, um, maybe chronic headaches or back aches or pains or different, just different things. And you might even put some connection around, huh, I think I've got some needs and they're not being met. And I don't know who to ask to meet these needs. Yeah. And, so, and it's hard because they feel that if they were to focus on these things, whether it's mm -hmm. emotions, mm -hmm. um, or physical needs that other people are going to see them being as, as if they're selfish. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. That, I mean, like if, if we were to tell it too, mm -hmm. like, okay, so, you know, Susan over there, her body is, you know, falling apart mm -hmm. and she's struggling. Is it bad that she takes herself to the doctor and does mm -hmm. these things? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, do I need to go help them? You know, like the right. two is going to be like, right. oh, I'll go help them. But right. well, they don't see it the same for mm -hmm. themselves. Right. You know, they see it as mm -hmm. but people are going to see me as being selfish mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. therefore they're going to reject me. Right. 
And right. we're like, no, when you can take good care mm-hmm. of yourself, mm-hmm. then there's going to be an overflow, right. a true helpfulness, a true right. love, a true right. nurturing of others coming right. from within you to others. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that's just counter to what mm-hmm. the personality is typically saying to the two. Right. Yeah. There's so much just suppression in, mm-hmm. in the need for the two. Um, and you're like, just use your voice. Tell us we're not mind readers. I think that's a huge piece for people that are twos to know, like the rest of nobody else probably is thinking through your lens. And so we're not mind readers. You've got to use your voice. I I promise you, you're going to be happy that you do. Whether people choose to show up or not show up, at least you said what you needed. Um, and that's better than hoping that somebody notices that you have a need. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for the high side of the two, though, when you're in health and growth, there is this ability to say, okay, guys, this is what um, I'm thinking for the holidays, or this is what uh, I'd like, or, you know, there there is this ability to speak your needs. And uh, with the space that, that the other people might not meet your need and that you are okay. Yeah you are okay. That is a really hard place to get for any of us, but especially our Enneagram twos that are so um, focused on that relational connection. And so it feels like, oh my gosh, there's a disconnect. How do I reconnect? What do I need to do to make you guys happy? Like, let me give, give, give. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just calm it down. Slow it down. Um, Sometimes we're going to say what we need and our people are not going to be able to mean it, but it does not mean that they don't love us. It just might mean they can't in the way that we need them to. Right. All right. So what about our type threes? Okay. So I'm married to a three, you guys. (laughs) (sighs) The holidays with him. Um, (laughs) You know, what sets him off? um, It's interesting because the older we get, I see things a little bit more clearly with him too. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Um, But the Enneagram three is fastest way from point A to point B and oftentimes what they want to do. So they're focused on them and what they want to do. There is quite a bit of people pleasing in the Enneagram 3. So they are like, okay, what are these people expecting of me? Let me give it to them so that I can have a little bit of space to myself. So I do see this during the holidays. It's like, okay, let me give you all of it. And then they want to kind of retreat or or not have to help with the dishes or whatever it is, you know, that happens with the Enneagram 3. Um, but it is, it is like, I want to look good doing what I'm doing. I want to be valued. And um, I want to be accepted. Um, I want, um, you know, I want to, I want to be a part of what I'm doing, but I want to choose what I'm doing too. Mm-hmm. So they don't love to be forced into things. They're in that assertive type, standing independently, mm-hmm. and can push against. Mm-hmm. So you might see some of that with the Enneagram Three during the holidays, where you're like, "You're always so good with everybody. Why are you acting so weird?" Yeah, you know. But they feel yeah. like there's nobody in this room that I'm trying to win favor with. And I don't know how, I don't, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this room. Well, and also I can imagine, and you'll have to tell me because you, mm-hmm. you live with a three is if the family is highlighting ways that they're not coming through, like oh, I've, I've been doing all this work and you haven't even started the dishes, you know, or like highlighting, mm-hmm. like I can see that being like an mm-hmm. activator you know, instead of asking nicely and in a healthy Uh way, but exposing a potential Mm -hmm. failure or flaw Mm -hmm. um, or just being disgruntled with them and Mm -hmm. publicly could be Mm -hmm. a really big activator. What do you think? Yeah. um, I probably, yes. Yes. I'm going to say yes to this. (laughs) I'm thinking like, I don't think I do that to Stephen, but probably because I know that he's super sensitive in this area. So mm-hmm. not highlighting those kind of things. I might say to him privately, like, hey, babe, I've done all of the shopping. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of families out there, especially yeah. that don't know the Enneagram or that aren't healthy yeah. or mindful. Right. And mother-in-law uh-huh. is going to say to son-in-law, yes. like, are you just going to sit there watching the football games? Yes. Like, you know, and so it can happen. Right. And that's not going to be, a, that's not going to fly with the right. type three. That's- yeah. That is such a good point. Um, this is, I love to, I love this kind of 
collaboration <laughs> too. Because yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't have my husband. My my mother is not like that. My mother thinks my husband hung the moon. So <laughs> she's like, let him watch the game, and we'll go do the dish. Well, yeah. actually, your dad's gonna go do the dishes. <laughs> That's what happens in my house. Um, but it is, yeah, highlighting any any faults or negativity for mm-hmm. in front of people. It's gonna be an activator for sure. But I do think that. Uh, another side of that is um, if the three feels kind of roped into something or that they don't have a, a, a way out, they're not going to be present, which then can cause some fights. Like, why are you on your phone? Why are you disengaged? How come you're not paying attention? How come you're not doing this? And so right. being mindful of um, of what the three needs. If you are a three, having some conversations around, hey, this is, they're not probably going to say like, this is hard, but I would want you to say that. (laughs) Um, But I do think being mindful for that, for the three, uh, we'll see, just like I said, what we'll see is a disengagement typically Uh from the three. They just shut down, disassociate, disengage. Um, They're moving moving towards the nine. Yes. Yeah. Yes, in stress. But they do like some good competition. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you throw a game or something in there, you'll see a different side of them come out probably, which is fun. Um, right. The healthiest side of the nine, though, I mean, the healthier side of the three that moves toward the six, I just got all my numbers mixed up. Um, the three moving towards the six, it is that that present part. Yes. It is the Enneagram three recognizing um, that all the people around them matter. And that it's not about projects. It's not about performance. It's not about doing anything. It's about being with the people that they're with. The healthier the Enneagram 3 gets, the more that they can can be in this. And this is not easy for a 3. I think it's like forever work for them to be able to be present with their people because they're always thinking about what needs to be done or what they should be doing. So it's really hard for them to kind of downshift. Yeah, absolutely. All right. What about fours? So the Enneagram fours, um, hmm, the trigger for them. Several in your families. I know. The trigger for them, they they usually walk in a little hot. They usually are a little prickly. I oftentimes say that Enneagram fours show up like in the porcupine stage. Uh, Mm -hmm. They just kind of expect to be um, for something to not go right or they expect Mm -hmm. to be rejected. They expect to be misunderstood. There's like this expectation Oftentimes from the beginning with the four and it, that's, that is their defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. Like it's like this guard, um, maybe their shield that they're putting up, like this is how I'm going to protect myself. And so walking into an environment that feels overly charged, if it's overly political or overly, um, one-sided in Mm -hmm. any which way, it's going to, they're going to feel a lot of tension because they care about authenticity, right? They care about people. They care about emotions. Um, so we do see that the highlight of that, like a lot of, um, I don't know, just uh, pressure for the four that comes in in this way. Um, even though, like my sister, she's mid forties, um, and we're all getting together, and she's already anxious about it. We, hmm. it's, we are such a tight knit family, <laughs> but she's already like, it's going to be loud and I don't know where the kids are going to go. And I, you know, I always get the wrong present for everybody. Like I, this is so hard. So there's a lot of that mm-hmm. pressure that the Enneagram four sits with before they ever even get to the place. Interesting. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, so I do think that it doesn't take much. Right. Well, and also, you know, usually within the family unit fours have always felt, and they feel like this predominantly everywhere, but they feel very misunderstood. Yes. And going into the family Mm -hmm. dynamics again, there is Mm -hmm. that apprehension of Mm -hmm. no one's going to understand me, Mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, and if, if they are a type of four that expresses themselves uniquely outwardly, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. their clothes or hair, whatever, Mm -hmm. there are going to be a lot of family members Mm -hmm. that you haven't been around Mm -hmm. that might not agree right. or mm-hmm. think it's weird or silly mm-hmm. and yeah. therefore you feel misunderstood misunderstood or rejected again right. mm-hmm. or there's something flawed about you and so it just kind of brings up a a lot of past wounds or hurtful feelings yes. that that they were already dealing with even right. as a young kid that now they're having mm-hmm. to rehash mm-hmm. um 
But at the same time, fours, when they're super healthy, Mm -hmm. they're very grounded Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. knowing, yeah, I am different. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I am unique. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to agree with my purple hair color or whatever it is, my tattoos or, you know, or just that I love something that's very unique and different Mm -hmm. than you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay that you Mm -hmm. don't like it. Um, Yes. And so they, I find them to be very grounded and able to almost kind of just hold the space for mm-hmm. others to mm-hmm. kind of not be at their best mm-hmm. because fours yeah. can hold such a range of emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, I think that's what I'm always, um, I find remarkable about mm-hmm. fours is mm-hmm. the range of emotions that they can hold and contain mm-hmm. with others. Like mm-hmm. others can act lots of different ways. And as long as the others are being authentic now, obviously mm-hmm. if it's hurtful mm-hmm. towards them, that's no fun, right. but they, they garner up or they pull out authenticity mm-hmm. in others. They do. And so when they mm-hmm. see others being authentic and real, especially emotionally, mm-hmm. they will, they will leave this or hold the space mm-hmm. for them to do that, which mm-hmm. I think is remarkable. Mm-hmm. I love uh, when I get an opportunity to work with the four and we move to, to the high side and we get to, it's, you know, it takes a little while. All the work takes, takes a little while, um, but watching them flourish in their fourness and mm-hmm. own all of it. Like, yes, I'm an emotional being. So is everybody else. Yep. Do I feel it a little bit more intensely at times? Yes, I do, mm-hmm. but they can harness that. It is beautiful work. It, uh, yeah. you know, all of the numbers in growth. I love to watch all of them grow, but the four is that unique uh, number that really like watching them own themselves. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. So, but when we're talking about family gatherings, the trigger or the activator often is there because of the, the past the childhood pieces, especially if it's family gatherings. If it's friends, it's probably not. They're probably mm-hmm. a lot of fun in friend groups. Right, that's true. They, yeah. That's right. Because they feel mm-hmm. like these are my people. They know me. They love me. When we go into our families, it's like these are these are people that know me. <laughs> and I think <laughs> they love me, but they might not know me, you yes. know, to the depth yeah. of of the desire to be known. So yeah. um yeah, so fours, my gosh, I'm surrounded by them and I love them so much. So if we look at our fives, I have a, a son that's a five. Yeah, let's look at him. And so with the five, uh, the oftentimes the activator or the trigger for the five, it, there's a lot to this one, I think, when it comes to um, space and noises and expectations. And uh, it really depends on the five, it depends on the person. So not everybody's created equal. So when we're talking about the fives, there's some that are going to be more sensitive to certain situations than others. Um, but overall the, the five typically wants to know what is expected. They want to know the timeline that, you know, what is like, what time are we eating dinner? How long are these people staying? Do I have to be in the room the whole time? <laughs> there's a lot of, tell me what the expectation is. Yes. When there's not clear expectation um, or they don't have a say in the expectation. I feel like that's a lot of the times where the trigger happens for the five. Um, mm-hmm. They're not loud and aggressive and assertive in, in how it shows up they just kind of disappear a lot. They just get quiet, retreat. You're like, where did they go? You know? And they're like, it's so loud in there. Or, um, you know, it's just, we have a, Thanksgiving is always friends at our house. So it's not family. It's, it's like a lot of friends come over and their kids. So it's really, really loud. (laughs) Christmas is family, which is really, really loud. Um, and so having sensitivities, my, my son with, um, a lot of the noise and things like that. It's it's the conversations around what do we need to do to make sure that that you can enjoy this? What does this look like? So we're yeah. sensitive to that. But fives in general, I think it's making sure that they have a, a say mm-hmm. in the expectation. Right. Um, and on the high side of it, you know, when, when a five is really, really healthy, um, they're able to speak up and say, this is what I feel comfortable with. Like my son the other day, we're like, we're going to go to dinner. And he said, I'm going to drive. 
myself. And I was like, oh, awesome. Can I drive with you? And he's like, yep, you can drive with me. Um, but he was like, I'm going to go to dinner with you guys, but I want to be able to exit when I want to exit. And so it was yep. like, okay, I love that he felt safe and confident enough to say, yes, I'm going to participate, but I'm going to drive separately. Right. I think separate vehicles is is a win when it comes to a five yeah. <laughs> because well, they can leave. And this is, this is a perfect example of why we have to take off our lens and put on someone else's lens mm -hmm. because – a lot of the Enneagram types can be very people oriented. Now, it doesn't mean that the five isn't necessarily people oriented, right. mm -hmm. but I always describe the five as like, let's say a cell phone battery that's been plugged in all night, mm -hmm. but when they take it off the charger, they only have 20 to 25% interactive battery mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Whereas everyone else has, let's say a hundred and then the extroverts, you know, hit the Mophie case, you know, the extra <laughs> battery when they're with the whole family. And of course the introverts are starting to windle away, but the mm -hmm. five is like, Hey, I started out the day with 20, 25% right. and mm -hmm. I come into this maybe with 10%. And when they they fear getting to that zero mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because at zero, if the phone turns off they're you know, if they feel like they've yeah. shut down, they're afraid they're not going to be able to turn it back on again, like right. catastrophic depletion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when mm -hmm. we recognize this, I love what you're saying is like, okay, what is a win for you? So mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. Hey, where's your battery life at? Right. Hey, we're going to have mm -hmm. all the family coming mm -hmm. over today. Where are you at? Mm -hmm. What do you need? Mm -hmm. Do you need to go away to, to mm -hmm. recharge for a little mm -hmm. bit to come to mm -hmm. the dinner table and then maybe yeah. exit and leave? Right. So setting up those expectations, mm -hmm. having them participate in the yeah. conversation is so valuable and they'll feel so respected and mm -hmm. honored that you took the time mm -hmm. to discuss it. Right. I do think that, that, um, stating the expectation mm -hmm. is helpful for them to then counter it. <laughs> you know, it's helpful for them to say, okay, then this is what I need. Yep. So, um, with, Without the expectation, sometimes they have a hard time knowing, mm -hmm. like, well, what does this look like? So I do think that stating that expectation on the front end, we're having a bunch of people over. This is what it's going to look like. They're going to be here probably for four or five hours. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So, and I, you know, my son is this, but if you're married to a five or you are a five, um, these are just respectful conversations. I feel like it's yeah. like, um, my, one of my really good friends, her husband is a five and, um, he'll go, he'll just kind of disappear and he's out feeding the goats and things like that. We all just, you know, we all know him. So we're like, yeah. Oh, he's had enough. He's taken a breather. So I do think that, um, Maybe I'll say this about the, this too, because there's other personality types that would think like, well, that's rude or that's right. wrong or that's inappropriate. Um, it's not. It's yeah. not. It, you maybe just don't like the way it makes you feel. It maybe makes you feel uncomfortable or what are other people going to think because they're not, you know, they're not playing the game or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But if you understand the individuality of each person, then I think that this is where we can hold space for people to be different and, and that's okay. Well, and also, I mean, like you're a seven, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of times that you're as a seven, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've got this great surprise for the family and we're going to do all this stuff and yeah. all these people are going to come over and I'm just going to keep it as a surprise, like worst thing you can do for a type five. The worst, <laughs> the worst, that or changing it, changing yeah. the plans. My son is like, no, you said this. And I'm like, well, we're going to change the plans, yeah. Isaiah. You know, and he's like, no, we're not, mom. Yeah. Um, but yes. So and that's hard piece. for some types to even conceptualize why is this a big deal? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But it is. And so is. understanding them, loving right. well, mm -hmm. negotiating, working together is so important. I think that's Okay, right. let's move into the sixes. So the sixes, and you can probably speak into this better than I'm me. I'm surrounded by sixes. You are, you are. I, I have a daughter that's a six. Um, you know, the activators or triggers for her, it's overwhelmed. Like she gets very overwhelmed very fast. Um so she's one that likes to know what to expect, but she mm -hmm. doesn't want to be overwhelmed by the expectation. So she <laughs> wants to be supported, but she doesn't want to be overwhelmed by the support, uh -huh. you know, true six all the way. Um, so with her or with sixes in general, uh, I do think the activator, it's like they want to be loyal. They want to be kind. They want to be included. They want to be connected. Um, I would think the tension that exists around the family dynamics 
can cause the six to feel uneasy and then they don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, and so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this though. Because yeah. So, okay. Yeah. When it comes to like, let's say my mom, my mom's a six. Now yeah. she's more of the phobic six and growing up like with Thanksgiving, we had Thanksgiving at our house when we go to someone else's house for Christmas. Mm -hmm. It was lots of anxiety, a lot of overwhelmed of planning the day and preparing for the day. Mm -hmm. And like, and they, and she can slip into that less healthy parts of three of like, what are people going to think? And, mm -hmm. you know, so then mm -hmm. trying to be successful, mm -hmm. but in the loyal, dutiful way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there, there's a lot of, um, anxiety that can go on. And so I think if you, um, thwart their ability to be faithful and dutiful, and so let's say you're not helping or you make the, the kitchen more messy mm -hmm. or like they're already planning and predicting and trying to strategize ways um, to make this quote unquote successful. Mm -hmm. So that they're being faithful and dutiful to, you know, the family and like, we're going to have the dinner at this time. This is mm -hmm. what I said. So we're going to be faithful to that. Mm -hmm. And so if you divert the plan, that is definitely not going to be very helpful. For mm -hmm. them. Right. <laughs> they're going to feel very anxious and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband on the other side, he's much more of the counterphobic six. And so he's just going to like get in there and like knock things out and get it done. Mm -hmm. Like kind of like very eight ish style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, it's because he doesn't really want um, plans to be diverted to then basically suck the life out of the family or the joy. Mm -hmm. so it's like, mm -hmm. hey, this is what we're doing here we go. I'm going to go for it. So mm -hmm. counter public six is, you know, move into their fears and anxieties right. with kind of gusto. And so it, it can look a little different for some of the sixes, but the right. biggest thing is they're wanting to know that everyone's a team player mm -hmm. and they will be a team player. Mm -hmm. And, but they also mm -hmm. want to know the expectations of what that looks like. Right. If they know, then they can play mm -hmm. you know, within those rules, within those bounds. They don't mm -hmm. want to be targeted mm -hmm. or blamed right. uh, that they're doing something wrong. So if you can just let them know, Hey, here's how I would love for mm -hmm. Christmas to unfold. This is, you know, what I'm shooting for. How mm -hmm. do you think you can come alongside and help me? Then the six can go, yeah, I can totally do that. Or this is what I think. Um, yeah. But not setting up those expectations can leave them feeling um, unsure. Right. And that they're going to make a mistake and get in trouble. Right. I So my daughter is the social six. She sits right between the two that I you just too. described, right? So secure. Yay. <laughs> we did a good <laughs> job. Um, so with that secure attachment piece. But that, what I think about her too, what has made a big difference is that um, I care about her feelings and I care about her concerns. So yeah. I thinking about all the fa family dynamics, I have three girls and a boy and my girls can be catty and fight. And then she's like, just that piece of like, why can't we all just do this together? So mm -hmm. she sometimes will stir the pot and make it worse. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it's like, this is just too much. It's overwhelming. But yeah. then when we go to family, like the extended family side, um, she wants me to understand that sometimes it's difficult because not everybody's a team player, like you just said. So yep. she has a hard time with that. So that six, the four, six, eight, they're in that reactive group. So they are looking for you to validate their emotions. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean you have to agree with them. But for me, I can say like, I can tell that you're overwhelmed. or I can tell that you're this, or, you know, she could just, she just tells me sometimes like, I feel mm -hmm. really overwhelmed. Okay. What do you need from me? So yeah. I do think the offer of like, what do you need from me? Instead of me trying to fix it, because she's she's like, I go to dad when I just want to talk. I go to you when I want it to fix. And I'm like, oh, I, I need to be better at that. Um, but holding space for them, you know, yeah. when, when they move to that high side um, and they're healthy, then the six is not so worried about right. everything else, right? And so right. what does that look like? Because you live with a, an adult six. I have a teenage or she, yeah you know, she's like a young adult but you've got adults so what does that healthy sex, sex look yeah. like yeah it's just really that engaging participant um but that is also at rest like they're just mm. able to be with the family mm -hmm. and enjoy that connection kind of the loyalty piece mm -hmm. but it's not out of fear or anxiety mm -hmm. um it's not moving to the low side of three where it's like 
you know, am I failing? Is something mm-hmm. wrong? Like they're just able to be mm-hmm. present and mm-hmm. connect with everyone. And it's really a sweet mm-hmm. space for sure. Yeah. I like that. I think like cozy. Just right. Feels yeah. Cozy. Feels cozy. Okay. So what does it look like for you and all the seven? Not okay. I know you all are different, yeah. but for the sevens, how do you get oh. negatively activated? So sevens, how do we get activated in the holidays? Um, probably negativity is probably the biggest one. Um, you know, sometimes too, I think that we can have this really big idea of what it's going to look like, and then it doesn't quite pan out like that because all the other personalities are involved and we're like, this is supposed to be fun. I don't know what everybody's problem is. Yeah. Um, you know, so I do see some of that piece. I do think that that's true. The negativity activates the seven. I do think um, conflict and, um, chaos doesn't. So chaos sevens are usually fine. Like let it be chaotic and fun. Like when I'm cooking, my kitchen is a disaster. Um, so the chaos is not it, but it is the, it is the conflict. Like I don't want to fight. I don't want to listen to you people fight. I don't want it to feel like this. Like make it stop is is oftentimes. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's probably not the same as a nine where, I can't handle conflict because of the discord. Mm-hmm. It's it's not fun and it's negative. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Is it more of that tension? It's yeah, I the fun piece, I think it's I mean, I think it, the fun piece is so real. <laughs> like when you say it, I'm like, yes, like can't this just be fun? Um yeah. so that is really real. Um and it's it's more I don't like the way this is making me feel. Mm-hmm. And so I don't like that those icky feelings. I don't like those. It's scary. I don't know where this is going to go or this feels heavy or I don't, I don't know how to get out of this. If we have start a conversation here, I don't know how to get out of it once it gets to those heavy feelings. So I do think it has a lot to do with feelings. It doesn't, it doesn't sit like that on the surface, Mm -hmm. but if you dig it out a little bit, it has a lot to do with, I don't like the way this makes me feel. Mm -hmm. So I want to avoid those things and like upbeat, positive, happy, chaotic a lot, more, the merrier, more food, more everything, Um, which everybody else is like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with this person? Um, It doesn't feel like that to us. It feels like this is wonderful. Um, The healthier side though of a seven is much more grounded. Mm -hmm. It is much more um, practical. It is not so caught up in the more. There's like uh, feet on the ground, centered in who you are, um, present with the people, and it's you're it, you're able to engage in the activity. So it's not about all the more and the big and the better. It's yeah. more around um, the connection with the people in the healthy side, if you can get there as a seven, which mm-hmm. those healthy sides are hard, especially when it's family dynamics. Um, cause the, you know, the sevens kind of gear up when it, when it's going to be family and chaos, it's like, here we go. <laughs> Y'all better hold on because we're going to bring the party. Right. And we, we, uh, we are, you're avoid- not going to suck me into the negative. I'm right. going to bring the, the positivity. Right. We are avoiding yeah. crazy. Like we are yeah. avoiding it. So it is like, what can I do? What can we do? Um, play the games, do all the things. Overpacking schedules and things like that is yeah. is part of it. But that's not the healthy side of a seven. The healthy side of a seven, a seven that's doing their work, um, they're able to like look at the day and recognize that three things is possible, not seven. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like um, the younger me was like, we can do 10, forget about seven. Right. You know, the older me is like, we're going to do two. We're going to do two. Um, So, okay. So let's head into your wing of eight. So what are eights, how they're going to get triggered and activated? Oh my gosh. Um, They don't want to be made to look stupid, incompetent, exposed, um, any, anything like that. If they don't feel like they're in control, if they feel belittled, if they feel demeaned, anything like that, Um, Mm -hmm. especially when we're talking about family dynamics, people being questioned about something in front of people, um, being made fun of, or like, oh, that's an interesting casserole that you made that could set them off. Like they don't want to look dumb. They don't want to be exposed in that way. And so, um, they really want to be respected and, and this is, I mean, it is a huge trigger. Like my, one of my daughters is an eight and 
it comes out a lot in teenage mm-hmm. years, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what in the world? What just happened? She's like, don't make me look dumb. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I told you <laughs> that your braid was crooked. You know, <laughs> it was like, what is this? Um, but it is that piece of so the activation is pretty fast. The, what happens inside of that? I do think that there's two ways the AIDS can show up. It can be, it can be loud and it can be feisty and it can be assertive in the room. It can be all those things, but AIDS are really image conscious. Mm -hmm. And so if, if they have an image that they, you know, that they've crafted, that they really want to be respected in a certain way, they'll just get quiet. So they'll, they'll get quiet. They'll retreat. They'll sit with it. They'll stew on it. And then they might come back a couple hours later with a zinger and like, Mm -hmm say it to somebody, you know what I'm saying? So that, I think a lot of times we just think that AIDS are like flying off the, you know, handle and just saying whatever. Most of the time, that's not what happens in stress. They get quiet. Mm-hmm. And kind of retreat into the five space. Yeah. And try to kind mm-hmm. of realign. And, and, you know, I was, my girlfriend's an eight. She's like, I did my healthy thing. I got quiet. I'm like, that is not your healthy thing, first of all. And second of all, you just got quiet to figure out how to come back out and pounce on this person. She's like, well, that's what I did, but I did it in a healthy way. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that always makes me laugh. But it is that quiet, you know, when they're healthy or moving towards that healthy side for the eight, there is that, um, they're more tender and more Mm -hmm. willing to be vulnerable and not so triggered. Um, so they're not kind of on guard waiting for somebody to offend them or expo- yeah. expose them. So there, you'll see a softer side come out with the eight. Um, that one, it, it, you know, again, that high side is hard. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, what I love about the eights is they're going to go to bat for their people. Mm-hmm. They are. They are going to stand up Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are being mistreated. Mm -hmm. And a lot Mm -hmm. of times that happens in families, right? So like when you go to a family Mm -hmm. gathering, you know, you might have outlaws, let's say, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. are just not kind. And they're going to, let's say, pick on some people Mm -hmm. that may not be the kind that Mm -hmm. stands up for themselves. And they're not going to put up with that. Mm -hmm. They're going to stand up for those that are being picked on and bullied and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. That can be also the high side, you know, of eights in these dynamics, but the healthier eight is going to do it, um, in a much more caring, loving, tender, diplomatic way than a revenge, (laughs) (laughs) right. Um, you know, go for it, uh, mentality. So, Uh um, but yeah, family dynamics can be really interesting and, you know, eights can be, you know, activated you know, a lot of times if they feel like they're being controlled, mm-hmm. if they're being mm-hmm. blindsided or manipulated, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, like passive aggressive, mm-hmm. oh, if someone would just mm-hmm. help me with the dishes, mm-hmm. like right. they're not going to like, just mm-hmm. ask me, mm-hmm. right. say it up front, mm-hmm. like, hey, can you help me with the dishes? Thank you for just saying it, not mm-hmm. you know, making mm-hmm. a, a big shame fest or control mm-hmm. fest. Right. Um, and so being really respectful of the AIDS, showing up, being assertive, mm-hmm. And what needs to be said mm-hmm. um, is much more important for the eight mm-hmm. than um, quote unquote, making them happy, mm-hmm. you know, like trying mm-hmm. to put on a face. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they don't appreciate that. Right. And the eight, most of the time, the eight wants to be in control. And so they want, and, and how they set the day up or what they, what they're trying to do, they, that is a big part of it. They want to be in control. Or well, I would say also yeah. it's more that you don't want to be controlled. They don't want to be that it's yes. So they don't want to be controlled. But when I'm thinking family gathering, they have a way in which they want it done. Mm-hmm. Or they want to go to somebody's house that they trust that they have it and they don't have to worry about it and they can yeah. just relax. Right. So yeah. there's this tension inside of this, like sure. are they gonna carve the turkey or they're not gonna carve the turkey? <laughs> you know, it's like Let's get at it, people. This yeah. Guy. Um, so yeah, it's it's just um, it doesn't always look like I think what people think eights look like. Like they yeah. are, they yeah. are. There's such a tender side to an eight. Um, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think they're yeah. some of the most tender on the enneagram. Yeah. But you know, yeah. because of past wounds and fears and stuff, mm-hmm. they they put on a very strong exterior that people don't always get to see that beautiful right. tender side. Mm-hmm. All right, my type last but not least, the type nine. Oh. So 
you go. Like, let me know. Yeah, like, how do I get triggered, Jackie? Yeah, tell how me. do you get triggered? Um, oh, all the yeah. tension. Come on, people. Like, let's just get along. Like, just enjoy one another. I don't understand why it has to be such an ordeal. Yes. Golly. Yeah. I'm just being real here. Like, mm-hmm. why does everyone have to get so up in arms about everything, whether it's mm-hmm. politics or the school system or the referees aren't, you know, mm-hmm. saying the right, like, and it was a night, I'm like, just be quiet and enjoy. <laughs> Goodness yeah. gracious. And like, yeah, I get activated by all the noise, mm-hmm. the chaos, yeah. the hustle, the bustle, the the energy, the emotions, all of it. It is mm-hmm. holidays are really, really hard for the night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The time frame you have to be on, you know, you have to get the turkey in here so that this can happen. And then the gravy has to start at this time. So it's, you know, everything's ready at the same mm-hmm. time. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. There's very little rest for the night, mm-hmm. unless you're one of those kind of lucky nines that really disassociate so much. Everyone just knows like, oh, there's uncle Jack. He just sits over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But I, you know, yeah. as a mom and mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm in it, you know, and so I'm feeling all the dynamics and Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you just even, you can even hear like right now, Mm -hmm. like it's just Mm -hmm. so overwhelming Mm -hmm. Um, because see the nines, we feel everyone's energy. We Mm -hmm. feel what's going on Mm -hmm. and I don't want to. And so I have to be very conscious of separating myself from others Mm -hmm. and doing my own work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cannot control others. I cannot save, serve, or Mm -hmm. I cannot save, preserve, and protect others. I can only do my own work. But even that takes a lot of energy Mm -hmm. to separate myself from others because the nine's inner being is trying to merge with others. And so it takes a lot Mm -hmm. of effort and and Mm -hmm. family expects, you know, every, we expect Mm -hmm. everyone to show up in their Mm -hmm. own role, right. Right. Their own characteristics. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually trying to grow, the family is not going to understand what's going on. Think of it as like an inner tube Mm -hmm. and the family is on this inner tube and we all have our little place on the inner tube. Well, if you start to move on the inner tube into a healthier position, everyone has to shift. And mm-hmm. not everybody wants to do that. They're right. not happy that you're moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. so as a nine, I, <laughs> I'm i just like internally, I can just feel myself mm-hmm. begging everyone to calm down. Oh, mm-hmm. my word. Mm-hmm. And like, just be quiet for a second. Yes. Like, But I know everyone else is like, but this is fun. Like the chaos mm-hmm. or the, you know, mm-hmm. like bring all the mm-hmm. kids and the party and the, and that's just not, and I, I'm not saying I don't want to have fun. Right. I just. I, f- the, the internal energy mm-hmm. is just revving everything up internally. And it's really hard to be present because yeah. I'm so, um, it just feels like this vibration inside mm-hmm. is just so mm-hmm. intense. Um, so that's how I get activated. See, it's so interesting. So my sister-in-law is a nine and I can see this, like when our whole family gets together, poor, sweet girl, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, and she th- she's a therapist, so I'm sure she's analyzing all of us too. Like, there's the crazy family. Um, but do you find that um, – and I'm totally asking you the question. Is it okay if I ask you yeah, the question? Go for it. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, let me ask you this. Do you, do you find that as a nine, you do better with – like clear boundaries or expectations. Like we're having this family get together and this is what it's going to look like. And it's not open-ended. Like they're going to get here at one. It's going to be over at five. Do you, is that helpful for you as a nine to have more clarity on, on the in some, length? In some ways it is. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I am, a sl- I'm slightly on the introverted side, but I can do both. Uh-huh. Um, I would say, that is helpful when I know the dynamics are going to be intense. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it is going to be just a family, like let's say, you know, Mm -hmm. let's say you have one side of the family that's just crazy and nuts and Mm -hmm. fun and loud Mm -hmm. and vivacious and all those things. Mm -hmm. And they all love it that way. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, I kind of need to know how much I can handle Mm -hmm. and take. Yes. 
Um, but if I'm going over to another family's house mm -hmm. and they are just chill, like, Hey, go get your food whenever you want. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch football. We're going to have, you know, the fire on, like I could do that all day long. So okay. a lot of it mm. is going to just depend on the environment dynamics. Yeah. So, but you can have that peaceful atmosphere and family is, you know, mad and, and argumentative and contentious mm -hmm. and that I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be like, I'm out. Like, I don't, I do not like this. So even though they could have the atmosphere mm -hmm. like setting mm -hmm. as being peaceful, but then if the family flares up, mm -hmm. it's like, I want to hightail it out of there. Get out. Yeah. Um, so, but whereas let's say the other family that is high energy, but everyone's getting along and having mm -hmm. fun, I could hang out with that a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, it's really going to be determined on how volatile relationally the dynamics are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. It's just so, I think it's so interesting to hear about all of the types, right? And then to be able to kind of in your brain, like you see them, you're like, oh, that's yeah. and so-and-so and that's this one. And, um, and then to have like an understanding of what's happening. So, you know, if you've got a nine and they're kind of like inching towards the door and it's really chaotic, it's like, oh, they are ready. Like I know when my, my sister-in-law is ready. I can, she's, I'm like, she's ready to go. Um, you know, and even they don't typically host, they have the biggest house in Florida, but they don't typically host. Yeah. Cause you can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. And you can't get them to leave. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, I, I've got her number. I know this. Um, <laughs> this is so, so funny. Um, but yeah, I, well, this, this has been really fun. I yeah. hope this is, you know, I I'm sure this is going to be beneficial for people just to kind of hear how all nine types can get activated mm -hmm. in the holiday season. Um, you know, and just to be curious and to ask good questions, um, come alongside your family, ask them, you know, Hey, I know I can be this sometimes, you know, what would be more beneficial for you in this dynamic now? Hey, not all families are ready for that. Right. That's, that's okay. But if you can do your own work mm -hmm. and be self-aware, you're going to go a long ways mm -hmm. with your family. So, yeah. okay. Where can everyone find you and what are the works that they can find and participate in? So you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all those places. And it's Enneagram with JB. Um, on my website, it's Enneagram with jb.com and uh there's coaching on there all kinds of different um freebies and and information that you can find about how to work with me i do individual coaching as well as group coaching um and i love to help people uncover and discover more about themselves through this helpful tool um and i just i love to watch people grow so i'd love to work with you if you're interested Great. Awesome. Well, thank you for being with me. It's so fun to be on your podcast. Now you're on my podcast. Yes. So thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Well, I hope you guys had so much fun with me walking the wheel of the Enneagram, hearing all nine types and how they can get activated and triggered uh, during the holiday season, but also when they're really healthy. Um, how can you come alongside, be curious, understand one another and have hopefully, and of course I'm a nine, have a more peaceful, harmonious uh, time with your family. And maybe that's fun or relaxing, um, but that's much more enjoyable. Well, if all of this is super interesting to you and you would love to work with a coach, then check out Jackie. We also have coaches at myenneagramcoach.com. But if you would love to become a coach, then we want you to try out our free mini course at yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash mini course. We love training Enneagram coaches to then get out in the world and to help others to thrive and transform and to be the best version of themselves. So we would love for you to participate with our Become an Enneagram Coach course. Well, just remember, the Enneagram reveals your need for Jesus, not your need to work harder because it is the gospel that transforms us. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.